In the last episode, we talked about how to actually connect to a database. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to actually select data from inside the database we connected to. So as you guys can see, I started off from the previous episode where we just simply included a database connection inside our dbh.ink.php file. And we're going to use this connection in order to actually go into the database and select data and then spit it out inside our website. So inside my index file, I included my database connection at the top here. So we actually have access to variable con. And inside the index file, inside the body tag, I'm going to go ahead and include a, a piece of code that goes into the database, selects a piece of data and spits it out. So before we get started, I'd like to show you guys what exactly I did inside my database. So inside PHP my admin, I created a database called login system because that's what I connected to inside my DBH file called login system. And inside this database, I went ahead and created a table called users, which we're going to use when we create the login system a couple of episodes from now. And inside this users table, I haven't actually included any kind of users yet. So we can actually go and do that together. So inside the description of this video inside YouTube, you guys can find a link to my lesson files for this lesson. And inside those lessons files, I will have a, a document called database code.sql. And inside this file, you can actually find the SQL code that I used in order to actually create the table called users and the insert statement that we're going to use in order to actually insert a user inside the users table. So I'm going to copy the code from uh, the bottom here called insert into users, blah, 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 that will actually insert a user inside this table up here. So I'm going to go inside my login system database. I'm going to SQL at the top here. I'm going to paste in the code and I'm just going to go ahead and include another user. So we have two of them inside the database. I'm just going to change the information of the second one. So it's not Daniel. Instead, we can say Jane Doe. And we can change the, the actual email to just Jane at gmail.com. We're going to change the username from admin to Jane245A or something. We're going to change the password to test123. Four, just to have something. I'm going to go ahead and run this code. And as you guys can see, now that I go inside my users table, we now have two users inside this table here. Okay. So one thing to bear in mind that I want to point out is that inside my table, the first row or the first column inside the table is called user ID. Now the user ID, when I created the table, if you go back to the code, it's set to auto increment. And because it's auto incremented, we don't actually need to insert any kind of data inside this column here. So that's why we're not actually inserting into a user underscore ID. Okay. So now that we have two users inside the database, I can actually go back inside my website that has nothing inside of it right now. And we can actually go ahead and write the code that will select the data we just inserted inside the database. So inside my body tags here, since we already had the connection up here, I'm going to write the PHP tags so we can actually write PHP code. And inside of here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the actual data using a SQL statement. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable called SQL. I'm going to set it equal to double quotes, semicolon. Now inside the double quotes, I'm going to write one of the SQL statements we learned in one of the previous episodes called select. So you guys should know how to actually do this by now. So I'm going to write select. Then I'm going to select everything from users because that's the name of the table. Then I'm going to go ahead and say, well, let's actually just go ahead and do this. Then I'm going to say semicolon. Now you might be asking, why do I include a semicolon when we have a semicolon? Because some people have been writing me about that. Now, when it comes to using uh, SQL code inside PSP code, right now we should only look at this code as what is inside the double quotes. So right now, if I were to actually write code inside my database, for example, like we did here with the insert statement, you guys will notice that there's a semicolon at the end of the SQL code. So that's something that we need to do inside SQL. And that's why inside the SQL statement inside the PHP code, I also include a semicolon at the end here. So this semicolon outside is the PHP semicolon and the semicolon that inside is the SQL semicolon. Okay. 
Now that we have the actual SQL statement we want to insert inside the database that will actually do something and return something to us, we need to actually query this code. And it's actually called querying the code. We want to send it to the database and run it inside the database. So the way we do this is by creating another variable. We're gonna call this one result. I'm gonna set it equal to a PHP function called mysqli underscore query parentheses semicolon and then we need to go inside the parentheses and the first parameter in here there's going to be two the first one is going to be the actual connection to the database which we included inside dbh.inc.php which is right here variable con so i'm going to copy this variable which we have access to because i linked to it up here and insert it as the first parameter then the second parameter is going to be the actual SQL statement we want to actually query inside the database, which is the one we just wrote here, like so. And now we'll actually go in and fetch the results. But now we need to actually take the data that we got from the database and be able to actually spit it out inside our website. So the way we do that is, well, first of all, we could actually check if we had any kind of results. So I'm going to create a variable called result check if you wanted to this is optional i recommend you do it though because if you don't get any kind of results from the database you're going to get a error message inside your website so it's a good idea to check for this sort of thing so we're going to say result check is equal to my sqli underscore num underscore rows parentheses semicolon and then i'm going to insert the query that we just ran inside the database and put it inside the parentheses. So it just takes one parameter. So now that we have the actual uh, result number, we can actually go ahead and check if we have a result above zero. So in the next line, I'm going to create an if statement that says if we have result check, and it's actually greater than zero, then do whatever is inside the curly brackets. So right now, if we did actually have any kind of result from the database when we want to select something, then it's going to run this code inside the curly brackets. So if we've got no results, it's not going to do anything here. Okay. So inside the if statement, we can actually go ahead and say, okay, now we got some kind of result. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and spit out the data. Now, if I were to create an if statement that says, if we have data, then spit it out then we're only going to spit out the first data from inside the database. Now, because I selected everything from the users table, I would like to keep spitting out data as long as we have results. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go and change the if statement to a while loop that will actually keep spitting out data as long as I have data inside the database. Now inside the while loop condition, I'm going to include a variable called row which is going to be set equal to a PHP function called my SQLI underscore fetch underscore a suck, which is going to fetch all the results from the result we have up here. So we're going to insert the variable result inside the parentheses and it's going to assign it equal to dollar sign row. So basically what's going on here is we get all the data from the database and we insert each row of data inside dollar sign row as an array. So because dollar sign row becomes a array with all the data from the database, the way we include it or the way we echo it out inside the website is the same way as an array. So if I were to go inside the while loop here and actually say, I want to spit out, for example, the username from the users, I'm going to say echo space dollar sign row. And then the way we would actually echo out data from an array is by using brackets. And inside the brackets, I'm going to say single quotes Usually inside an array, we could actually say zero or one or two or three because we want to get out the first or the second or the third data inside the array. But because when we assign the data inside dollar sign row, each data result will actually get a name assigned to it, which is going to be equal to the columns inside the database. Meaning that right now, if I want to fetch the data from inside dollar sign row, I need to actually write the name of the column we want to access, which is a really neat feature if we want to access data results easily without getting confused about which data we're actually spitting out. So inside the brackets, if I want to get the username, I just simply write user underscore UID, 
which is the column name for the actual username. And then I can go to the website and actually see what happens here. So now you guys can see we get admin and we get Jane245A, which is the usernames of the actual users. I could actually go ahead and include a break right next to the code here, just so we can see exactly what's going on. So we're gonna say break like so, and then we can actually see the names easier. So this is how we can actually access data from inside the database using PHP code. Of course, there's other variations of how we can actually select data inside the SQL statement. For example, right now we're just selecting everything from inside users. I could also say we want to select everything from users where maybe user underscore uh, first, which is the first name of the user, is equal to single quotes, Daniel or something. Then if we go back inside our website refresh, you guys can see we only get admin because I'm only selecting the user that has Daniel as the first name. So we can also do a bunch of variations to this SQL statement up here, just so you don't think you can only select everything from users or something. So I hope you guys enjoyed. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to actually insert data inside the database. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.